Hey there, Boots Owen here. I've got a Triton Enrich shower to take apart today. If we could find some numbers on it. It's an Enrich 8.5 kilowatt. It has another sticker inside. The screws were missing when I got it. I suspect there's absolutely nothing wrong with it apart from four missing stainless steel countersunk half inch screws. But I don't need it. And it was in a skip probably. I don't. I really don't remember. Plastic front. It was in a skip and was a bathroom strip out and if you look inside there it is just spotlessly clean spotless but what are you going to do in fact it's so clean that apart from the apart from the olive on the pipe down here the copper olive there on the inlet i, I would go so far as to say it may not have been used it doesn't appear to be any like i've seen showers in the past and you've seen videos on my channel where the cables coming in are burnt and stuff like that, overheated. I found a bit of uh, shower flex, or not shower flex, but shower cable, heavy cable for showers and the last four, four inches, 10 centimeters of wire of cable down here, that would be in here, completely crusty and cooked, which is amazing because they were probably bigger gauge than that cable. So, you know what, I'm not gonna take it apart. I'm just gonna talk through it because it's too nice to take apart. It'll spend some time on the shelf and then I'll Maybe take it apart later. I think that's what's going to happen. So it's a model in rich down here on the sticker. Can you see that? You might not be able to see it, but I can read it. 230 to 240 volts, 7.8 to 8.5 kilowatts. So the kilowatt rating depends on the voltage coming in. Max pressure, 1000 kPa, 10 bar. Min pressure, 100 kPa, 1 bar. Uh, rated pressure, something, something I can't see. Model number A, 1914500. 0922 really that makes it less than one year old couldn't be could it be a faulty unit that was put in and taken out it could that's just just oh, i don't know see it's got it's got the trappings of having been installed because it's got like grime there water was in it so it was probably installed and commissioned could be faulty Yikes. Okay, so what happens with this thing anyways? Let's talk through it. and Maybe that'll, that'll do for this video. I don't want to take it apart. It's too nice, but I don't, don't need it. Um, what are you going to do? In terms of scrap, it has pretty much no value because you've got a little bit of wire. You've got a bit of brass on here. Like, that's worth pennies. And you've got a couple of micro switches, a neon lamp, a valve with some metal in it. But the vast majority of it's plastic. Now, there's a copper top on here and a copper a pair of copper elements in there. You can get the copper apart, but it's worth more as spares than it is as scrap. As scrap, you might as well just throw the whole thing into a scrap heap and let them chop it up. There's screws in it. Some of them will be stainless, but most of them don't look stainless to me. They all look like uh, ferrous. That's a magnet. Magnet sticking to everything there. So it's not even, you know, steel is not worth much and there's very little steel in it. So what happens here? You've got a switch on the front, stop, a power select switch in fact, stop, cold, economy and high, and then you've got a temperature range. These things regulate temperature by regulating how much water passes through. Colder shower will have more water flowing over the element. Hot shower, water flows sl more slowly over the element or less, flower less water flows over the element, so it uh, gets hotter. The element has time to heat that water. So this thing here is the regulator, and it is just a, a passageway for the water to go through that gets constricted. So the water comes in, it's got a solenoid valve, so that's what the first switch will do. It turns on the solenoid valve for cold and leaves it on for economy and hot. So if you want a cold shower, this temperature gauge won't do very much, or the flow regulator won't do very much other than let more water in and out. Um, so it just opens and closes the valve, same as in a washing machine. Water comes in, into here, goes in through this cylinder, and there's a pipe that comes up from the bottom the whole way up through the centre, uh, and the water comes out through that pipe. So that's where the water path in there, very simple. This thing here is a little pressure sensor, and I presume it's set to one bar. Once it's over one bar, this thing will pop up or pull down, presumably pull down. I can't tell right now, but it's got a little plastic hook, and uh, it hooks onto that kind of cream colored piece and pulls it down or up that 
is the low pressure warning and it'll stop working if there's low pressure then when you turn this knob here one click will turn on the micro switch for this brown cable going to the back there's a micro switch and then two clicks and three clicks will turn on these two brown cables here which go to element one and element two so i think that's off i don't know though and power comes in over here you've got an earth you've got power coming in some are, some of these have earth bonding over to here but this one doesn't neutral comes in and just goes across to the micro switches but most of the time or whenever it's on the neutral side or of, yeah neutral side of the element is energized live comes in through this thermal fuse it's a bit tricky here with this oh, okay the fuse blew on both sides of the neon that's why i'm getting confused there so when the power is on at all the neon comes on is that so yeah without any switch being on the neon will be on in that case um because it's straight onto the live and the neutral but the live comes in you can have live going straight to this micro switch here going straight to the solenoid so you can have it uh, with cold water even if the thermal trip which is this device here is is on and it's like a thermal fuse or a thermal cutout it's got a code on it there they're all pretty much the same but one screw is loosened to remove it and then you slide it off and lift it up and sometimes you can reset them if you take it off and then pop underneath but you've got to do it in the shower the thing attached to the wall power comes in through that over here into here splits in two for the two elements and then comes back again to the two elements here and here which ultimately go in and out and are connected to neutral and there ain't much to it there's three cams difficult to see maybe but in here turn that switch you can hear it clunking activates the cams and it's a really simple shower and if i needed it i would get some stainless steel countersunk screws and just install it i'm going to keep it on the shelf it's too good to scrap the only issue i have now is having Played with this i don't know which way is on and off it doesn't have it's got a spline shaft there and it doesn't tell you which way is off and which way is on so i'll put that up to the top put that plastic fellow there up to the top in what i would call the zero position 12 o'clock and set that to stop and maybe that will be correct the other thing i didn't mention this little black fellow here there's a little diaphragm in there, so if the shower head gets blocked, this will shoot out and override, shoot out what could be very hot water, uh, but it should be down into the shower basin or wherever you've got your shower sitted, sighted, sitting, sighted. And the last bit is there's two screws here and here, there to remove this fascia for installation because you can bring the water in from above and down and over or any within any space in here presumably up from above so up from below as well if you cut a notch there's a notch prepared there for cutting directly under the inlet all these showers are a little bit different i was wondering was it ripped off the wall it wasn't even ripped off the wall the uh fixing points the mounting points are pristine too good to scrap what do you do yeah it could be tricky getting that thing set up correctly because i don't know if it's hot or cold now Put it back on. There we go. And ten. It's going too low there, so I need to lift that up. Give that a twist about here. About one. Mount it back again. So it goes to ten. Back to one or zero. I just don't know if they're correct, but I'll leave it like that. Because I don't know what to do with it. You've had nine minutes of your time taken. But it's too good to scrap. What are you going to do? Questions or comments, leave them below. Hopefully that was helpful if you're, you know, wondering what's wrong with your shower. If any of the symptoms are, you know, fault finding should be quite obvious, really, if you give it a moment to think about it. If you've got no water, this thing could be out, or the switch driving it could be out, or the power to the machine could be out. If you've got no heat, the thermal fuse is probably your issue, or the switch, which I've never seen fail, those micro switches, um, or the element could be burnt out. Your flow regulator, if it's not changing temperature, flow regulator could be pooped. And the pressure uh, valve in there could be gone if it won't get hot as well. Because it won't be allowed to get hot, but it will be allowed to turn on. 
So, yeah, like I said, questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later. I didn't drink any of my coffee. Yikes. I'm gonna be cold.